Hey guys, my name is Dominic Flex and today we're going to cover gold plating and we're going to really demystify, you know, some of the best practices because what I've noticed for gold plated jewelry, the companies who sell them quite often say the durability doesn't depend on us, it depends on you. How much you sweat or anything and they're constantly just kind of putting the blame on you as a consumer for their shitty products. So I really want to break it down for you and explain, you know, what are the best base metals, you know, metals that oxidize, the prices, sustainability, and all the topics around how you can buy jewelry that's gonna last a lot longer. Because I don't personally make gold filled jewelry or plated, I only work in solid gold, but I wanted to make this video so that hopefully you can find ways of buying jewelry that lasts longer and add less to fast fashion and consumerism. Cause I don't really wanna to contribute to that, but of course I know that a lot of people buy it. So hopefully this helps in giving you a little guide on tips to how to buy jewelry that lasts longer. So the first thing that we're gonna start on is really how can you buy gold plated jewelry that's going to be the most durable? One of the easiest things you can do is look for the right base metal. When I'm saying base metals, I'm really talking about the metal that's underneath the gold. A lot of the times for fashion jewelry, they're going to be using metals that are relatively inexpensive. So they're gonna use copper, brass, stainless steel, or silver. But not all of these are necessarily the right fit. Why aren't they right fit? So the very first thing is one, some of these metals oxidize and two, the hardness of them. So if we go straight into oxidization, a lot of metals like copper, brass, silver, they oxidize. If you've ever looked in like your old jewelry box and you still see silver, it's very common that you're gonna see these kinds of little stains on them. This is what's oxidization. It's basically when the air comes into contact with your jewelry and it has a chemical reaction that creates these kind of tarnishes. And when you have gold plated jewelry, these tarnishes will still come through. You really don't want that to happen. Why? Because when it tarnishes, it's going to create these really ugly spots on your jewelry, which a lot of people will stop wearing their jewelry because of that. And so usually what I'll recommend is, I, is buy stainless steel. Stainless steel doesn't oxidize. It has a very high percentage of chromium in it, I think like up to 10%, and that actually prevents it or really, really prolongs the effect of oxidization. And so you're never gonna have to worry about that. You're never gonna have to worry about cleaning your jewelry or having spots on it. You know, once it's plated, it's going to look that way. This is super common for silver, brass, copper. All of the times when you take off your jewelry and you see like those really yucky stains on your fingers, that's part of the reason why. So it's not just like aesthetic for your jewelry, it's also just like an inconvenience and it just looks really bad. As I mentioned earlier, the second part is the hardness of the metal. So when you have a very, very soft base metal, it means that even if there's plating on it, it's going to scratch a lot easier. And when it scratches, that gold plating is actually gonna come off. And so if you look at this table of, you know, uh, Mohs scale, we have this for gemstones as well. This is for uh, metals. So if you look at the table of hardnesses, you can see that sterling silver is the softest. Next you have brass, then you have copper, and then you have stainless steel. So ultimately, if you're going to be buying any type of, you know, gold plated jewelry, I really do recommend buying stainless steel because it is gonna last the longest. And this isn't just like theory. I used to work in, like, I've done everything in jewelry from high, high end all the way to fashion jewelry. I sold, you know, every, so many brands of different types of fashion jewelry who made their jewelry in different ways. Some were copper, some were vermi, some were stainless steel, gold plated, some were silver with like three microns thick, which I'm gonna explain in a second. And ultimately the ones that lasted the longest and who had the least amount of returns were the brands who used stainless steel. Every other brand, copper, silver, whatever, the gold came off so incredibly fast. It didn't matter who made it, who, what thickness, it was kind of always the same. So anytime you're buying, try to always buy stainless steel. All right, so now let's actually break down the types of plating because as you're gonna see different names, flash for my gold filled and these will, these are very good indicators of like the thicknesses and these will represent the different thicknesses of plating. So the very first one and the cheapest one that you're gonna have is gonna be flash plating. I never recommend buying flash plating. That's the kind of stuff that you really see in like that costume jewelry. It's like the thinnest, thinnest. You're gonna wear it for one day and it's gonna come off. So never buy flash. The second one is going to be plated. And plated has different thicknesses and so you can always ask and it will probably say in the description of the jewelry. Often 
oftentimes with plating, you're going to see very specific measurements such as microns. When they're referring to microns, they're referring to the thickness, which is equivalent to 0.001 millimeters. So if you have one micron or two micron, two micron is going to be 0.002 millimeters, and that's going to get thicker and thicker and thicker. This is something that you're also going to see in Vermeil. And so the plating is going to be a little bit defined. You have to kind of ask the brand. It should say in the description what it is. Obviously for rings, you want it to be as thick as it possibly can. For earrings and necklaces, it's a little bit, you know, if you buy one micron, it's still gonna last an okay amount of time. So if you're kind of on a budget, that is something that you can do, you know, get thicker for the rings, thinner for the, the upper jewelry. Gold plating is also done on any type of metal, whether it's stainless steel, silver, brass, copper, as a whole, it can be done on any type and it can be done in any carat. So nine carat all the way up to 24 carat. I feel like in Canada and the US, we don't really see above 14 karat because it starts to get too yellow and it's not a preferred aesthetic. Next we have Rumai and Rumai is kind of presented as this kind of like luxury plating. I don't really agree because if you followed along from the video, it's done only and exclusively on silver. So it needs to be done on silver and it needs to be a minimum of 2.5 millimeters thick in the US and places in Europe. In Canada, the minimum for Vermeil is a lot thinner. It's only one micron thick and up. And so normally when you're going to be buying gold plated jewelry or any type of like Vermeil or anything, always check where they're made. This can be a little bit tricky because I know for a fact, having sold many, many brands of jewelry, a lot of them <laughs> tend to lie about where they're produced. But if you can dig a little bit, find that they're made in the US versus in China versus in Canada, that's gonna affect the thickness. Buying from the US is always the best option because their standard of Vermeil is a lot thicker, which means your jewelry is gonna last a lot longer and that's ultimately what you want. The last one is filled and we're not gonna to touch on it too much because it's not as common. Gold filled jewelry is the thickest form of any type of like superficial coating on a base metal. It's it has a requirement of a minimum of 5% gold, which means that it's going to be much, much thicker than any of the other ones. The reason why we don't see it as commonly is because one, it's going to be more expensive and two, it's a little bit of a trickier process and it can only be done on like flat surfaces and only specific styles of jewelry. And so that's why it's less common and I'm not gonna cover it as much. So I kind of want to go into, you know, the cost of fashion jewelry because fashion jewelry has the biggest markups in the industry. And I kind of want to give you a little bit of a glimpse of like, is it worth it what you're paying for? You know, especially when you see like Vermeil, there's a really big hype and they kind of position it as like this like luxury product, but you know, it's not. And I'm going to break down the real life prices of these base metals for you. Silver, silver is only maybe about like three and a half to four dollars a gram just to give you a concrete what that means a ring on average like those tiny little rings they're easily around like two grams so that means that the price is only like eight dollars and so if you're paying 150 dollars which most gold plated jewelry and gold fill for my or whatever is always going to be between let's say 75 dollars all the way up to like 300 dollars a ring when the base metal is absolutely worthless. Same thing, copper, silver, brass, I think they're all below $1.50 a gram. You have stainless steel is a little bit closer to silver. So yeah, let's say you pay maybe, I don't know, $8 a ring. This gives you a really good indication of the markup of the product. When you're buying gold, our markups are like insignificant. And sometimes people think that silver is worth a lot more because it's positioned into the noble metals. But if you compare it to gold, which you're going to pay easily close to $100 a gram, it's really not the same. That's why sometimes I see people who pay $250 for a gold plated ring and then the durability of it is only, let's say, three months, a year, a year and a half maximum. And I'm being very, very generous when I say like a year. And then you have to get it replated and replating is going to cost more than what you initially paid because initially it was made in China. So that replating of it is going to cost anywhere between like, let's say 40 to a hundred dollars. And so if you're having to pay that every few months at the end of it, you should have just bought gold because today, like for me, I'm not 
if you want to buy fashion jewelry, 100% do that. Personally, I don't like buying fashion jewelry because I don't want to contribute to some fast fashion, throwing it out and just creating waste. It's not something that I want to do. And me as a designer, I don't do this because I don't want to spend all this time creating something that I know is just going to be thrown out in six months. For me, that's not my MO. You know, but if you are going to buy gold plated jewelry, knowing that it's not going to last very long, I feel like it's better for you to buy simple products still in gold. You know, there's a lot of companies today who sell little gold rings, or little gold studs or whatever in the, the $300 to $1,500 price range. So you can still buy luxury without having all of that energy and time wasted of having to go back to the jewelers every few months and having it replated or, you know, losing a piece that you love because it's tarnished and ugly and then you just end up throwing it up throwing it out or never wearing it again because it looks bad, right? You might as well get it done properly the first time and it's going to last you forever. Gold can be re recycled and upcycled many, many times. So that's why for me personally, I always recommend buying gold if you can. Then it comes into the, the element of sustainability. So I see this all the time and there are so many companies out there who make claims of sustainability, green, eco-conscious, I don't care. If it's gold-plated, it is made to have a very short lifespan and it's made to be thrown out. They are not fast fashion brands. Greenwashing in the jewelry industry is very prominent and you know, client clients need to be aware that this is a reality and that they're gonna be charging you a premium for having these green products. So is it sustainable? Absolutely not. I hope this video helped. If you still have any questions I didn't answer, do leave them down below. I, I try to answer them as quickly as possible. If not, we also have short form content, kind of like little micro abbreviations of these longer form content on our Instagram and on our TikTok. So do hop on over to that and join the community. My name is Dominic Flex and thanks for watching. Bye.